Good morning, everyone. Today is September 15. This is a, an asynchronous class, I'm sorry. <laughs> Anyhow, yeah, I've been seeing lots of your entries and I'm quite enjoying myself, except for the fact that most of the pictures are dogs. Let me miss you today in dog go. Anyhow, yeah, wow. Biglan, yung throat ko biglan ang naging, uh, naging scratchy. Okay, so today we will be this um we'll be doing a brief of, brief of a recap about our previous topic, which is elements of composition. Under elements of composition, Shampre, we had our the following: we have symmetry, we have pattern, we have lines, we have depth of field, and then what was the last one again? I forgot at the moment I I I was enumerating them. <clears throat> Okay, sorry. So the last, <laughs> the last element is texture. Okay. So yeah, um, we were able to discuss how each element, uh, uh, at least how each composition style, create um a more vibrant, a more dynamic photos for us. So again, patterns. It can be light patterns. It can be rhythmic patterns. For symmetry, it can be perfect symmetry. It can be an imperfect symmetry. For texture. Yeah, um, as long as your texture, uh, as long as your photo can exude a sensation or, or a physical sensation, uh, um, just by looking at the picture, you would assume that, uh, that the material is soft, smooth, rough, brittle, then that's texture for us, okay? So again, most of the time when we, when we make use of texture, it should be a bit on the foreground or at least closer to the subject. Okay. Again, it still depends depending on, it still depends depending. It is still case to case basis depending on how um, how huge or how how that particular texture um, is composed in our frame. If it's the entirety of the frame, even if it's the background, then uh, yeah, you can still use that as your texture. Okay. But if it's just a um, half of your screen or one fourth of your screen then sadly it won't be uh, it won't be considered texture lines again we make use of lines uh for um to direct the eyes of our audience to a particular subject on our frame okay and lastly we have depth of field of course um we make use of depth of field to segregate or isolate our subject from the background okay so it creates a sense of or a feel of distance, even if we, um, it's only a photo, even if you cannot measure it by 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 the images um, on on your frame. The mere fact that you have your subject vivid or clear or sharp, and the rest of the background is blurred a bit, then that creates a sense of um, dimension. Okay. So those are our five elements of composition. Again, composition being one of the main elements of photography. So parang may subcategory lang siya. Okay. So again, good afternoon, everyone. Yeah, most of you guys are here. Um, I will be waiting for more students because this is asynchronous. Again, guys, um, if you are if you are not familiar with our nature of asynchronous, again, you're not required to show up. You're not required to to at to attend at least um, real time. You can just watch this recording um, any point of the day or even um, even tomorrow, Wednesday, or even before our official synchronous class on Thursday. Okay, so again, I'm just doing this uh, so I can record my, my lesson. Um, I used to do it on YouTube, but unfortunately, YouTube um, uploading on YouTube takes a lot of time and um, takes a lot of editing um, editing skills. so I, I just stopped doing them altogether. I used to do I used to edit my presentation, my record my lectures, but due to the nature of uh, of the of this pandemic and having lots of students, having lots of sections and having lots of faculty members, um, my my hands are currently tied up, so I just do away with recording this on a on on Teams on our platform. Okay, so um, today 
is our last topic for midterm, and this is all about the eight effects in photography. These eight effects, guys, um, if if your elements of photography and elements of composition will create more dynamic feel to your photos, then this effect will make it more animated or make it more lively. Okay, so um, it's an additional flair, if you will. Okay, but then again, you really don't have to use all of them at the same time. This, they are just here to make a splash on your photo. Again, if you'll be, um, if you're aiming to have a portfolio of visual, visual, visual stuff, um, making use of any of the eight elements will first make your portfolio um, come out alive. The next is, siempre, um, you would let people know that you're you're familiar with 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 these things. Whether you're gearing to become an actual photographer, casual photographer, or you'll be doing your own own website for your industry, whether architecture or or engineering, it will be a plus. Um, uh, um, instead of buying stock photos on Shutterstock, on 500px, you get to sell your own, diba? So anyhow, without further ado, let's begin with our lecture. So I'll try to keep this short so that these people, these lovely 15 people, actually kasama pala 15, these 14 people can can take a break from 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 their screens. How do I do this? Okay, I forgot. Here we go. Okay, so we have the eight elements of effect, uh, common effects in photography. So my apologies for this particular part because I was a, I, I wasn't able to edit this. I I do my own slides. Okay, the first one is bokeh. Bokeh refers to the aesthetic quality of blur, the out of focus area of the image. It's how the light renders lighted areas that are out of focus. The difference in lens aberrations and the aperture shape causes the area to blur, creating the look that's aesthetically pleasing. Many photographers deliberately use the shallow focus technique to create images with prominent bokeh areas. The term comes from Japanese bokeh, which literally means his or a blur. There's good bokeh, but there's also bad bokeh when the blur is so distracting or harsh that it takes the focus away from the subject. Thus, good bokeh can enhance can, uh, an image while bokeh, uh, while bad bokeh can ruin it. Okay, first off, how do you do bokeh? You do bokeh, guys, by doing depth of field. So that's just about it. But instead of a plain depth of field, your bokeh or your, your, your frame should include light sources at the background. So when you um, change your aperture, your focal point, um, the the background will blur enough that the objects there will will create some sort of light blur slang. Okay, so it doesn't have to be light. It can be colorful objects in the background. So these colors, this variety of colors will become light blurs instead or light bubbles instead. Hence, or thus making it look like light blurs. Okay, so that's bokeh. Again, we have good bokeh and bad bokeh. Guys, you do bokeh only if you have something in front of you, just like what we do with depth of field. You cannot do depth of field if there is no foreground or subject. Okay, so it's only background and it's not depth of field. It's just a blurred picture, okay? So again, you have to be careful in doing depth of field and shampoo, you have to be careful in doing the bokeh ren. Again, you need light for it to be considered bokeh. If, with the absence of light, then it's just a simple depth of field, okay? So you have to be careful lang in labeling it. And especially now, I've posted our first performance task. Actually, I'll be posting the second performance task on Thursday, but you can start doing them now. Both PT1 and PT2 will be um, is now available on our Pinoy Sandbox website, nevertheless. Okay, another example of bokeh. Um, as, um, notice how the hand holding the lens or camera lens is vivid or sharp and the face or the body of the person or half body of the person is too blurred, okay? That's an effect of bokeh. Again, you don't have to have light sources, actually, as long as you have bright, colorful um, background or images, it can or it will be turned 
two light orbs pa rin. Or it will be, at kaya ba, no? A blot or a light blot pa rin. Not exactly light blurs, but a blot. So, uh, in a way, it creates a bokeh pa rin naman. Pag, um, if it's too blurred and you cannot distinguish that anymore or the object anymore, then yeah, pwede pa rin siya gawing bokeh. This is a bad bokeh, the second one. Okay. You, we all know or we can all say that this photo is photoshopped. This photo is photoshopped. God. Okay. So, yeah, we have the guy from Lego Movie. Okay. Cute as... Uh, um, sorry. Hindi ka na magmura. Cute AF. Okay. And we have bokeh here. But it's obvious to me that this uh, bokeh is edited. As you can see from the reflection on the surface... This um this light orbs does not reflect or is not the same on the reflection on the surface. So only a handful, one, two, three, four, is reflected on the surface. And also the reflection should go sideways, not towards us. So it's um this is a poor poor editing skill from um yeah, great editing from from Sarah. But bad editing when it comes to you know, form, visualization, and so on. Okay, so again, the first element is uh, the first effect we have is bokeh. The second one is panning. Panning refers to the horizontal, vertical, and uh, rotational movement of an image, still or video. So when we pan, like when we do panorama. We move our camera, whether it's sideways, upward, or downward, to create a long photo, right? But instead, when you say panning, it, it indicates a motion or indicates a movement. So when we do pan, whether it's horizontal, vertical, or even rotational, we create a sense of motion or a sense of direction, whether the subject is heading left, heading right, upward, or circular. It should induce or it should create this concept or this this idea of motion. Okay, so that is panning. So uh, I make it a point that the background is what we are talking about. And it's an age-old technique to achieve panning. You must have a moving subject that you must stay with. So when you say stay with, it means that your camera should follow the direction of your subject or the uh, the moving object okay so susundan nyo you follow it okay this will create an interesting effect with your subject being sharp amid a blurred background great for shooting up uh, moving objects racing or sports events so um this panning technique common is commonly used in in sports events racing events so yeah um uh, let's have an, a good example that because our current one, the background is covered by my my um, PowerPoint template. So, as we were saying a while ago, the subject in focus should be clear, should be vivid. It's not super clear, but it should be clearer than the background, which should be should have a zooming effect or moving effect or moving motion. Okay, so uh, with this particular example, you can show our audience or our viewers that the woman is heading right, diba? Right? Even if it's still, even if it's, even if she's the only person um, that is identifiable in this frame, you would know that she's moving around the town or moving around the city because you can assume that these are vehicles, these are shops, these are establishments. And it's just a motion of blur because she is moving or she's moving fast. Okay. So this is um, moving sideways. Okay. Let's have another example. Again, um, Panning also mentioned rotational movement. So we can have this as an example. So, um, yeah, the motion is circular or rotational. Uh, you can just imagine the guy holding the camera in his mouth or in his neck while he spins his kid around. Diba? So, R.I.P. baby. 
Yeah. So, yeah, tapos bibitawan niya. <laughs> no, I mean, um, this circular motion or this rotational motion is considered panning as well. Okay? Because you create a sense of motion, a sense of movement for your audience. So, whether it's panning or rotating to the right, to the left, it doesn't matter. As, to, as soon as you get to see this particular zoom effect, which is circular or arc style, then you'd know that it's it's rotating okay um doesn't matter if it's to the left or to the right um the photo itself shows or indicates that it's in motion that's and that's enough for your audience but in this case obviously going back to the previous example you would know that the subject is heading to the right so when you do panning horizontal vertical you always have a direction it's only that the rotational movement won't have any specific um, direction or any um, definite direction. Okay. So that is the second L, um, second effect in photography. The first one, again, is we have bokeh. The second is we have panning. Now we go to the most difficult effect ever, which is rule of thirds. Rule of thirds is one of the most basic principles of composition. It has been used for many centuries by artists, painters, and now photographers. With rule of thirds, the photographer breaks down the photo into thirds, horizontally and vertically, so that you have nine equal parts. The main subject is not placed in the middle of the frame. Thus, it looks dynamic, moving, and interesting. Guys, when you, um, if ever you do portraits, make sure that your subject or the person is in rule of thirds. Because if that person is in dead center, it looks like a picture for a week. Pang lamay yun dating. So make sure to make it more lively, to make it more appealing. Instead, go with rule of thirds. It's a lot. It's a lot um, eye catching. Shempre, you have the look away um, shots when your subject is looking away from the camera. If the if your subject is looking away, for example, it's the guy is here or the subject is here. On the left side, he should look away going to the right, okay, to this direction because uh, the space you create or the, sp the empty space will provide um, visual representation of what that person is looking at or at least heading to look at, okay. Yeah, when you're taking a photo, you must mentally divide your viewfinder or LCD dis display into three or to three frames for your shot. With a grid in mind, identify the actually you can't you don't have to do this anymore. With your Android and iPhone camera, you have grids. Um, let me check my iPhone. On our stock iPhone camera, you have to sadly you have to go to your phone setting, which is weird. I really don't like iPhones or iOS. Okay. Under the camera setting, under setting, there is this thing called grid. So you just have to turn it on and then voila, you have your grids with you. For Android, it's a lot more um, accessible. You can go directly to your camera app, go to the settings or the cog um, icon, and just click framing lines. Uh, for Vivo phones, it's framing lines. For some phones like Huawei, it's actually rule of thirds, or some apps or some third-party apps, just call it grid. Okay, so use that. Then uh, once you turn it on, your your camera or at least your viewfinder will have grids on it. So you can just you know, point and shoot. Just make sure that the intersecting line is where your subject is is placed or is located. Let's have a more uh, more example. Okay, so this cheetah or this, yeah, I think this is a cheetah. Yeah, so this cheetah is in rule of thirds because um, the two intersecting lines on the left um, hits the body of our subject. Okay, so that's that's how simple it is. Okay, so you don't have to be um, a rocket scientist to do rule of thirds actually. Okay. So another example. So for a more close-up shots and landscape um, close-up. So we can focus on a particular object or a particular part of the face or body. 
So in this particular example, we have the eye, the right eye of this lovely lady. So this is obviously our main subject. Okay. So the, the face is basically our subject, but the right eye, or at least her right eye, is our main subject. Okay. So that's greed. So greed will vary depending on what kind of um, ratio or aspect ratio you have on your phone, whether it's four by three, you'll have a squarish photo or rectangular photo. Um, if it's widescreen or 16 by 9, you'll have li like this. Again, um, I made these two as an example because these have two separate aspect ratios. This is a 4 by 3 square or square type or box type. And this is a wide angle. Okay. So as long as the grid is equal to each other, then yeah. Actually, um, you don't have to worry about the grids as long as your phone has it. Um, what um, whatever aspect ratio you use, it will have uh, an equal aspect, um, equal grid or equal uh, rule of thirds for us. Okay, so this again is the most difficult, most challenging um, effect in our list. Okay, moving to the fourth or fifth. Wait, let me check. So again, first we have um, bokeh, we have panning, we have yeah. This is third, actually. Rule of thirds is the third. And now we go to the fourth. Golden hour. Or for other cases, we call it magic hour. Okay. Golden hour or magic hour refers to the first hour, the sun rises. And the last hour, the sun sets. So that is basically golden hour. Whenever the sun creates a golden reflection, golden ray to our subject, to our background, then that's golden hour. But of course, um, it's only applicable if you have, uh, on a particular location, this being made in, or the term being made in Western countries, syempre, golden hour siya. But countries like Philippines, like Asia, we call it magic hour because it's, um, yeah, um, ours, our sunset doesn't look as gold as like that. But we do have other colors. We, we have violet we have blue diba? um depending depending on what time of day you have different colors for us so it's not just gold okay so instead we call it magic hour again if you can do gold then use golden hour the term golden hour but otherwise you can you can just use magic hour okay it creates a different quality of light it adds the in, um it adds interest and drama to the scene it's the perfect time of the day for creating magnificent photos. So yeah, when you do golden hour, even magic hour, you have to make or you have to allot a particular time of day. Like what, during our example for elements of uh, photography, um, when I showed you my wife's photos uh, back in Japan, yeah, we had to wake up 6 a.m. in the morning. Or actually, we have to be out of the hotel um, building at 6 a.m. just to see the sunrise. Right? Land of the rising sun. So might as well take a photo of the sun rising, diba? Okay, so yeah, that's golden hour. A particular time of day, particular time of night. Uh, again, um, it depends on what kind of color you want to capture. Okay, so with the Philippines, it's mostly blue, violet, okay? For, for sunset. Or even dawn or dusk. Okay, so a good example of golden hour is this one. Um, I'll try to edit this um, PowerPoint next time to accommodate magic hour. So I'll try to take a photo of um, our sky, our dark blue or violet sky to make it magic hour instead. So yeah, golden, I oh know, Whitfield, diba? With Whitfield, it's obvious it's gold. You can have a gold effect. So same here. So it's a prenup looking photo. It's very it's very basic, but the sunlight creates a more distinct addition to the already sweet photo. Landi. Okay, not being bitter, but let's move on. Okay, we have golden rectangle. Golden rectangle is also known as golden mean, golden ratio, Fibonacci sequence. So yeah, it's a, it has a lot of terminology. It makes use of 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, 34, and so on. So if you're familiar with the Fibonacci sequence, then that's about it. And it is uh, represented by a spiral. It's a golden spiral. Eh? 
Okay, so yeah, like what you see in the background, the spiral, and the end of the spiral will be your subject or the main subject. Let's move on. Okay, let's keep that. Okay, so our first example using um, a four by three aspect ratio. So you can have a visual um, spiral and at the end of the spiral, it's a barn and that's basically our subject or main subject. So this is a good example for aspect ratio four by three. Let's now look at a 16 by nine or wide angle. So this is a good example of a 16 by nine. As you can see, the spiral is better looking. It's not as abrupt. Uh, as you can see, um, you're, the girl who's, who looks like Mia Khalifa is our subject, obviously, but um, if you will apply um, the golden spiral or the Fibonacci sequence, you will end up with the uh, in between the eyes, the space in between the eyes or just above the nose. That is the main end point of our golden rectangle. Hence, um, it creates a good composition. It creates a good photo. It, it, also, it also helps that the legs or the feet of the girl is raised so it creates a, a realistic spiral if you will yeah, and going back to a more simple um simple shot or actually wait before we move on to this let's try to i'll try to post something which is quite extraordinary no really um i'll be posting my photos of our Fibonacci sequence. So some phones don't have, or some camera apps don't have Fibonacci sequence, diba? And you can you can rely on third-party apps to provide us one. I'll try to upload the same. Okay. Unfortunately, it only posted. I don't know. If, ayun, there you go. So let me show you guys if I can just move this how do i change the screen okay wait let me check so looking at on our particular um themes we have here two um two screenshots of my camera so the first one is android and the other one is iphone i, I forgot which one's android which one's iphone okay so i i show uh, yeah this is my iphone as you can see the fibonacci sequence is here, but the grid is, looks different. But nevertheless, yeah, the end, um, the smallest box or the smallest grid is our end or main subject. Ito. So, yeah, rotational, then this is the end, and this should be our main subject, or this is where our main subject would be. And as you can see, it has this um, rotate icon so you can just change the um the um uh, the formation of the of your of your what do you call that of your spiral so it can change form actually depending on how you angle your shot if it's portrait if it's landscape if it's a reversed landscape again you you turn your phone around yeah so you have this rotate angle or rotate um grid this is for iOS okay for Android, um, uh, both um, both apps for for these two is called ProCam. For Android, it's called ProCam X, but yeah, it's basically the same. So yeah, with ProCam for Android, it actually creates a, a cheap looking grid or spiral. Okay, so this is where your um, what do you call this? Your spiral should be or should end. Okay, so again, you can swap it, you can, you can rotate the, the spiral so you can have a di different angle. Okay, so it's not just always on the left, you can move it on the right. Okay, so again, um, to make use of golden spiral, you can just download third-party apps. So, so you can have ProCam, you can have Camera FX, um, you have um, Camera FV5. So again, um, eventually you'll, 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 you'll want to try out um, the golden spiral so might as well try those apps some of them are free um some of them can be downloaded um via apk so yeah just be resourceful but if you want a copy um i'll try to look for one in what kind of app store is that 
Basta it's an APK app for Android. Uh, I forgot the term. Pure. I'm sorry? APK pure, sir. Ah, baka. Pero I, I think I have something different. Eh. Pero yeah, uh, I stopped the side-loading apps na rin kasi I try to, I, I try to support um, our developers kasi. Being a developer myself. So wait lang. Google Play Store. Here we go. Yeah, I forgot what uh, APK alternative APK. Wait lang. APK alternative store. Okay. So what, was, what app was that? Get Josh, like me. Aptoid. Yeah, uh, I was I was using Aptoid before. You can install Aptoid on your phone and it will act like like an actual Play Store. Um, for those using the latest Huawei phones, um, syempre, Google services has been removed. You can use Aptoid, guys. I used to use this back when I was still side-loading games or side-loading apps. Um, currently, I have this um, app on Play Store kasi that's why I stopped side-loading apps. Yeah, but where's my app? Yeah, there you go. I have my own app on Play Store. That's why um, it, it's hard for me to sideload apps now. Um, syempre, um, I would want to. I would want to um, support my fellow, my fellow developers. This is my company. So yeah, okay lang. I'm just flexing. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. <laughs> okay, going back. Where am I? Wait, how do I go back to Teams? Okay. So let's go back to our PowerPoint file. Oh my God, this is wrong. Sorry. Wait lang. Wrong, 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 wrong one. Let me go back here. Okay, sorry. Um, I, I, I now opened the same PowerPoint file inside Teams. So I don't know how this thing works. I'm sorry. I'm such an idiot. Wait lang, huh? Okay, so let's do away with this because it's already here. How do I exit this? I don't want this. Okay. Hola. I'm sorry. I have to quit. Have to stop. Stop sharing. How do I stop sharing? Uh, this this um, Teams app sucks. Kasi it's inconsistent. Actually, okay, here we go. We're back with Golden Rectangle. So, yeah, you can you can compose, you can create good um, Fibonacci sequence um, shots by using apps that are kahit papano free or if you can afford it, then buy it. But I suggest that you just download free apps instead. So, in, uh, that's if ever you won't be doing pro or will be really serious with your photography you don't have to buy these expensive apps or at least for some they are really expensive okay so just um but uh, yeah pero try it try it try using the free apps available next is fill flash uh, the most difficult the most complex effect that we have fill flash is a technique in photography where the photographer uses flash diba it's mind blowing okay it's perfect for backlit environment. So this is um, this is a setup wherein it's um, your shots are against the light. When you do against the light photography, it's called contrajour, which we will be discussing uh, later on. Pero um, when you take photo of your groupmates, classmates, diba, you're you're in front of a window. Tasa sabi ng kasun mo, guys, it's against the light. Tasa ii ikut kayo. You turn around. The photographer will be. Um, facing or at least will be behind the the window, the bright window, and you guys facing the sun, diba? In front of the window. So, ganon. But instead, you don't really have to do that. Again, when it's really dark, don't use flash, guys. Um, your photos will look flat. It will You, you will look like um, you came from a sex scandal video. Okay? So, never use flash um, at, the, um, at night or in the dark. Use aperture, or sorry, sorry, not aperture. Use ISO. Adjust your ISO level so your your camera can can accommodate more light. Shampre, when you adjust aperture, um, sorry, ISO level, your shutter speed will slow down. 
don't think that it's broke. Um, basta it will create or it will um, open up longer to have more light in it. Pero, uh, at night, never use flash. Uh, it's the most amateur thing to do. Yan. Pero going back, when um when doing behind or against the light photography, that's the time, that's the only time you can use flash. Okay. But that flash as in you when you click it, it will uh light will flash on your on your um flash bulb on your camera. Um for mobile phones, turn on your torch or flashlight on. Turn it on, as in it's always on, then start shooting. In this way, your photos will become more natural. Your audience or your your subjects can look away from the flash, di ba? Hindi yung nasisilo sila. Some sometimes kasi when you, when we want to take when when we want to take good photos, night photos, and then we use flash, our subjects are always um parang na flash bang. I, I I forgot. Um yeah, they always have these squinting eyes. Some are even. Uh, some even look like they're sleeping. Diba? So instead, keep your flash open. So that's fill flash. Um, another another alternative for fill flash is instead of turning on the flash all, all throughout, all the time, if it's against the light, make use of diffusers or reflectors. Reflectors, it yung parang foil that you place below your subjects, below your model, so that the light coming behind will bounce back and illuminate the front or the 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 no the face of your models okay so if not diffusers uh, if not flash then just use diffusers okay so this is a perfect example of our field flash so again if you are doing against the light photography it will look like this your photo no matter how beautiful or handsome your subjects are they will look like they are uh, coming from a horror film so instead we'll make use of field flash or reflector so, lalagay dito. I don't know what's wrong with her attire. Okay. So, uh, apologies because this is the only photo that has a side-by-side -by -side example. But, yeah, this did not come from any porn um, website, guys. I just This is just coming from Google. Anyhow, you can see the distinct difference of this two same, um, this same photos. The one on the left is without the um, field flash, and the one with the right, of course, we have one. It provided more detail. Okay, so yeah. Another example for portrait shots. Yeah, we have a prenup or wedding photo. Um, shampre with the, without the flash, without the field flash, it will they will look all uh, like silhouettes, diba? or shadows. But instead, a good photographer will provide field flash, will provide diffusers or reflectors. To illuminate our subject better, so they won't be smothered by the light from from behind or from the background. Okay, that's fill flash for us. Okay, we're now going. Um, I, I, if you will notice, I I skip or I make it every other. Each photo is easy. Then the next is a bit difficult. Then easy. Then difficult. Then easy. Then difficult. So this is, in turn, uh, a more complex or difficult um, effect in our list okay before we move on to that long exposure is another interesting photo uh, photography effect which entails a narrow aperture and long duration shadow speed this is done in order to create dreamy landscapes or light trails so you can see it from movies like um fast and the furious need for speed yeah this is done in order to oh, okay long exposure can be tricky it can be taken in low light situation most often, photos will be overexposed because having long exposure on Sunday days can be a problem. Actually, you can do long exposures if you have an ND filter for your SLRs. Okay? But if you don't have an ND filter and if you're only using your mobile phones, then you can just download an app. You can have long exposure or light rail apps um, on Play Store or on iPhones. Um, with Huawei, it's built in. Um, my last Huawei P30 Pro has the, has its own light rail or long exposure shot or menu. But syempre, I'm using my Vivo. I have to make use of uh, third-party apps like um, Camera FE5 or Camera FX. Okay? So a good example of long exposure is like this. Beyond the shots. 
okay? Um, your your usual highways, then instead of cars, you see light rails of your of their headlights or rear lights, okay? Next example is this one. So instead of using lights, we make use of smoke. Diba? So smoke, diba? it's moving water even. Smoke and water is, are both moving. You can do it on falls or on flowing water. Yeah, it will create good uh, milky look to our smokes. Um, our fogs, our water. Okay, last but not the least, the most difficult one is contrajour. We can type it out as one word without the hyphen. We can type it out with hyphen. But for our activity, we can just remove the hyphen. It's basically the same. Okay, contrajour is a term against the light or against daylight. It's a French term. And it is basically our silhouette photography or shadow photography. The light source is located directly behind the subject. And contrajour effect produces high contrast photos between light and dark. It hides details yet emphasizes contour of the subject and shapes. So this is, if you want to, um, if you want to make your subject look sexier, if you want to, um, if you want your male models to look chiseled. Make use of contrajour. Eh, syempre, uh, make them use or make them wear fitting shirts instead of baggy or instead of loose shirts. Okay, so so their shapes will be emphasized better. Okay, so a good example of this one is this. Again, you can still see the illumination on her face, pero overall, it's um, it's her silhouette that is presented or that is the subject of our shot. Okay, so this is a good example of contrajour and color and depth of field okay so this is for a woman again medio soft um it is it is taken um with with femininity in mind diba? so yeah feminine pa rin. even if it's it uh, even if it can be done in a sexy way she um the photographer wants it to be more feminine lang Siyempre, if we have feminine, we also have masculine. So this this guy looked more like um light Yagami. Uh, or I think it's L. I don't know. Okay. So yeah, it created this distinct kick-ass photo, diba. So yeah, it's not photoshopped or whatnot. It's just taking against the light photography in a in an advanced level. Wait lang guys. Huh? So, my apologies, guys. So, um, there was a commotion behind me. So, yeah, these are all the eight effects in photography. These are eight effects that you don't have to use post-production or you, that you don't, um, that doesn't require any post-production or heavy editing on your part. Okay. So, let me skip to this. Again, this is the same um, PowerPoint file that I posted on our thread. Okay. So, yeah, let me go back to a another screen for you okay so guys on our particular um particular thread right now we have what we uh, what we call our performance task our first performance task for midterm which is called photojournalism so with photojournalism you are given four themes you only have to use one you only have to choose one these themes are Work from home, food porn, the new normal, and home sweet home. All of which can be shot, or actually should be shot, inside your home lang. You don't have to leave your the premises. You don't have to leave your room even to do this. Okay? So include the tags, photojournalism, the team you chose, your section, and PT1, and you art up, and what effect what composition and what element is there or is present in your photo. So let's use, let's go to IM. My apologies, my internet connection is is quite slow right now. Okay. Wow. 
Valerie's ganda ng shot. Okay. Um, my internet connection is really slow right now. Okay. So let's try to look for accountancy 191 PT1. Let's see if we have some entries. Oh my God, we don't have one. And you are Let's go and you are top. So again, um, I cannot provide you distinct examples, but you just can, you can just go to IM. Um, search any art app and you will see all entries for art appreciation that made use of um, IM for us. Okay, this was four years ago. Um, CIV 155P, uh, this is a midterm exam or prelim exam back when we still have prelim. So we have bokeh, but this is the actual bokeh. Ngayon, let's look for a more recent example, shall we? Mm-hmm, mm hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, I can't look for any. Well, it's really down below. Okay. Four years. Okay. Let's look for this one. I hope this is the correct section. We have an yeah, activity two. Sorry, it's activity two. It's not um, an exam. This is not uh, okay. Activity one. Where, where is your performance task? No performance task. Uh, let's try. I'll just look for one example for our performance task before before I, I I'll dismiss you guys. I just have to make sure that you are familiar with how this performance task will work because this time you won't be posting it on our thread you'll be posting this on our actual website or on the actual im site mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. austria i had great photos from from um accountancy students i would like to find it Ah, here we go. Uh, this is still not under accountancy, but this is actually, these photos are actually quite good then. Okay, we have PT1. Okay, here we go. So, um, let's change it differently. I think they have their own PT1 here. Yeah, here we go, PT1. Okay, for PT1, again, our our requirements are work from home, food porn, new normal, host with home. Back then, our, our themes were camaraderie, love, True Blue Nationalian, so it varies, or the the, the theme with uh, is now different. But nevertheless, the activity is still the same. So yeah, you post your section along with PT1. So if if we are on Civ 201, it will be Civ 201 PT1. Include art and new art app, no tags or no hashtag sign, guys. And then our PT1 itself, photojournalism. This is important. These three are all important. Then the theme that you chose. Okay, so again we have four themes that to choose from. F W H. Uh, sorry, W F H. God, I'm dyslexic. Food porn. If it's all about the food, like the um, previous photos that you posted before. New normal. Everything that is now normal during this time of the pandemic. And home sweet home. So it, you can talk about the family. You can talk about the love inside the fam inside the inside your home. So it's all up to you. Again, because it's photojournalism, you need to have you need to provide some story behind it. So um, you are required to do at least five sentences for or a paragraph at least um, for your photo. So you post it here. Then, sure, the last three tags needed or important element of photography. Element of composition. Wait, that was the element of composition here, and effect here. Okay, so these are all important. Um, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Minimum of seven tags, and they should all be there. Okay, so again, only one um, effect is needed. Only one. Um, composition is needed, only one photography is needed. Okay, so multiple entries will not be considered because, yeah, it's like 
doing fill in the blanks and you have multiple answers, diba? Right? So that will be quite unfair. So that is how our PT1 look will look like. So let's look for other PT1s. PT1 entries, I mean. So back then we were able to leave. We were able. We will. We were able to go out and take photo. Pero siempre now, now we have the new new normal. We have to do everything at home. So yeah, this is another good photo. Yan indoor. He was able to do it indoor, diba? Yeah, camaraderie. I I often um mention what what was missing and what not. And the score actually so yeah okay so again if you have more questions regarding our first photo um performance task today kindly post it on this thread which is the topic thread ito na lang okay it's a topic thread um again when you post or when you finally post on im you can click the link here and copy it and post it on our thread here okay so you post it here the grading system is here already. 50 for the perfect score, 45 for one mistake, 40 for two mistakes, 35 for three mistakes, 25 for not a single thing was correct. As in lahat mali. So again, you get to have a pasang awa grade pa rin, right? And syempre, if you did not do anything, if you did not pas submit anything, if your, um, if your tags are too wrong, that I cannot find you on IM, then you get a zero. Okay, so again, be careful, guys. Then post it here, post the link here of your uh, of your picture so that I would be notified that you have posted it, okay? I have, how many friends do I have on IM right now? I have um, 595 followers and 391 following. So again, it's quite difficult to look for you each and every um, post. So might as well post your tags here, okay? So yeah, if you have further questions, post it on the thread and you can start doing photo, um, PT1 as well as PT2 because it's already posted here. I will just post the Teams um, PT2 on Teams on Thursday, but actually it's already posted here. So you can even start doing that then as, along with your PT2. By the way, uh, do we have our beadle here this uh, this morning? Where is our beadle? And Jerome. Hello, Jerome. Good morning. Morning, po. Bro, what did you choose for for the exam, for our midterm? Just a recap. Um, ano lang po. Um, Napag-decisionan po ng klase namin na subjective po kami. Okay. If you are to use subjective... Your exam is already posted na rin here. Okay, so the instructions are here. Although I'll be posting the same instructions on our teams pa rin naman. Pero as early as now, you can start doing this because the deadline for our midterm or midterm exam is next week. Our GE's exam is always a lot earlier than the actual midterm exam. Just so you can um, focus on your major subjects or professional subjects during the actual midterm exam week. Okay? So again, you have um, you can start doing them now. Um, but if you have questions, feel free to post it on our topic thread, so that I can each uh, I can share or I can answer each and every questions. Let's yes, Joanna. Hello, Joanna. Hello, answer dead. The deadline for the exam, the performance task. Performance task. Again, I would have to ask you guys. Um, if we have it deadline on a Monday next week, rest day kayo ng Thursday. But if you will have it deadline on Thursday, or sorry, sorry, mali pala, Tuesday, Friday pala tayo, I'm sorry. Okay, if we have it deadline on a Tuesday, we still have to meet, uh, we don't have to meet on a Friday. But if you want it on a Friday, then we still have to meet the entire, the entire week. So it's, 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 um, it's with you guys whether we meet on Tuesday or Friday. It's all up to you. Again, I'm just laying out the positive or the benefits of submitting on time or submitting on a Friday or on a on a Tuesday. So, depende sa inyo. Um, whatever you choose, okay lang sa akin. Basta one week early tayo. Okay, so next week yun. Okay, questions? Or is it clear, um, Joanna? Or hindi pa rin clear? Here na po, sir. 
Ah, okay. So, any other questions, guys? If you have any, post it on our topic. Then I'll try to um reply to it, parin naman. Okay. So, guys, thank you for all. Uh, thank you all for attending. Again, this is Asin Cruz. So, again, wala lang. Weird nyo eh. <laughs> Anyways, thank you and see you on Friday, guys. You can start doing the PTs. Bye. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.